Hey friends, it's Peggy Hall back with you. Today is Thursday and it is June 23rd, 2022. And we are talking about creating energy in the morning throughout your day. And now we're going to be talking about the energy of the evening. This is an area where I personally have the most struggle. This is where I see room for improvement in areas where I want to grow. For me, it's difficult to make that change between the daytime working hours, which I would say go from about nine to five, and then the evening hours from about, let's say five to 9 p.m., and then getting ready for bed. So we'll talk tomorrow about the nighttime energy and what that might look like. And I do have some questions for you again today. We've been experiencing and exploring a series of questions to determine or to just think a little more deeply about what am I doing? Why am I doing it? What is my day like? Are there areas where there are energy leaks that I can fix? Or am I accidentally or maybe even intentionally poking holes in my own ship? Now, before we go any further, I want to read to you a card from a lovely, healthy American. And this comes from uh, Pennsylvania, Janice, thank you for writing. And she said, dear Peggy, I am sending you this note to tell you that I think you are such a terrific, lovely person. And I really appreciate all you do for us healthy Americans. Peggy, your ever positive attitude is better than anything the doctor ever ordered, especially now, she says, and it keeps the smile on my face. Your words info and attitude are truly inspiring and empowering. We are going to win this spiritual battle. In fact, God has already won. I pray for you and Pastor David, and I wish I could meet you here on earth, but I really look forward to giving you both a big hug in heaven. Take care and God bless in Christ's love. Jan, a fellow healthy American. Look at how adorable this is. Just seeing these little birds and there's the American flag and the beautiful flowers makes my heart sing. Thank you so much, Jan, for sending your note. I love to read the cards and letters here on my Living Swell channel because we are all about adding positive value, encouraging each other, supporting each other, and getting support. And I want to thank the moderators on this channel as well for keeping that stream flowing and for showing up day in, day out to support me. I really appreciate you and all of you lovely, healthy Americans. How nice is it to get a card in the mail? Do you have someone that you could send a card in the mail to and let them know how much you appreciate them? So here we go, friends. We are going to be talking about evening energy. For me, this is my most challenging time of the day. I easily could work from 6 a.m. until 3 a.m. the following day. I love what I do. I'm fascinated by it. I dive in. I can work for hours without even getting up. And I know that is to my own detriment. Yesterday, we talked about taking breaks in the day, keeping yourself nourished and hydrated, keeping your work balance so that you have time for yourself and also with others. So I hope that you'll go back and watch the previous videos in this series. So the questions that I have for you right now, let me know in a comment below what you feel is the difference in energy between the daytime energy and the evening energy, or is that line blurred for you like it is for me? When I started to think about how evening energy is different than let's say the nine to five, I realized that the, the late afternoons or the, the early evenings are really an ideal time for reflection, for winding down, for shifting gears, and for really throwing off whatever it was I was doing during the day and maybe having some time for fun, for play, for friends, for family. And this is an area that I am endeavoring to really make some substantial changes. And for those of you that have commented on my makeover and I'm looking better and refreshed and so forth, yes, there are some physical changes that I've done, but I believe that it is more of a mental and energetic change that I've made. And the number one thing, and I said this to my husband, I said, I am going to stop working at six or 6.30. Now I'm still working toward, toward stopping working at that time. But what happened for me is I didn't plan anything to look forward to. And so I would just rather keep working because I enjoyed it. 
I was getting things done. I was productive. I was getting feedback from my lovely, healthy Americans. I could check more things off my uh, to-do list, my inbox, my email list was going, uh, you know, my email inbox was being answered. So I thought this is great. I'll just keep working until I'm so exhausted, I'll fall into bed. And I did that for about two years. But now I have some questions for you. And these are the questions that I've posed for myself. So when I think about things that I do during the day, and what do I want to do in the afternoon and evenings, I actually, and I started doing this, I would enjoy and I do enjoy playing with my animals. I like to take my dog Teddy on an evening walk and not only take her on a walk, but I like to play. I like to do some tricks with her. I like to keep her engaged. I like to cuddle with my kitty cat. I like to feed them. I like to groom them. I love spending time with my animals. Then I love spending time outdoors and tending to the flowers and things. I like to deadhead the roses and I like to water and I actually like to pull weeds. That's something that I find very satisfying. So I like to be in nature. So my husband, Pastor David, and I decided that to mark the demarcation of my work day, and whether or not you work at a job or you're retired, that's okay. The same idea of an evening routine could still apply to you because the evening energy, as the sun starts to go down and the temperature changes, it also gives a signal to our body and brain and spirit that things are changing. So I want to honor that. So uh, my hubby and I decided we would start going on evening walks together and we would drive to different hikes and trails. And it's something that I had to look forward to rather than just be on the computer and be on social media and watch another video and answer another email and do another load of laundry. It's like, okay, I'm going to set this time aside to be with my husband, to be with my animals. And even if I'm not walking with my husband, I can do a walk by myself. I'm going to make a change between the workday and the evening. And when I had something specifically to look forward to, it was easier for me to stop the work day. Otherwise, let me know in a comment below. Are you like me? Could you just keep going until midnight? Social media, videos, emails, links, memes, it's endless. All right. Um, how often do you schedule time to have fun, to actually play? Now, if you have kids, you probably play normally, naturally. It's just a part of their life. Hopefully that you're not just telling the kids to go play on their own, but you're engaged in their playtime or maybe your grandkids at maybe with your animals. So I think playing is a lot of fun. I used to think that playing was a waste of time that it, I could be doing so many other things. And then I realized how much fun it was to play even silly games. Um, and maybe they're not silly games. So we love to play like this paddle ball game and um, different kind of aiming games, you know, like you do the ring toss. And we were on vacation a couple of years ago before all this hogwash started. And they had all these games out in this area where we were renting our condo. And they had where you toss the bean bag into the hole. And then they had this rope game where you, you toss this uh, weighted rope and it spins. I don't know the names of all of them. It spins around like a, a ladder and you try to get higher on it. And it was so much fun. So now when hubby and I go for a walk, we play on the playground. We actually go down the kid's slide. We swing on the swings and oh boy, do I wish I had a tether ball. I like to hit that tether ball and wrap it around that pole and it gets out all that excess energy and adrenaline. So make some time to play. That's what I'm doing uh, in my late afternoon and early evening. And then when I think about the sun going down and the sun sets, do I take time to be outside? Am I there to watch what's happening? Can I notice the change of the light on the trees or on the building. And to me, that is such an important part of the day. I used to get a little sad at sunset. Am I the only one that, that felt that emotion? It seemed to me like, oh, the day is over. It's an ending. And I decided consciously to change my perspective. And instead of being a little bit sad or melancholy or feeling lonely at sunset, again, maybe that's just me. I was had a sensation that the day was over. Then I realized 
the day is over, but the evening is beginning. And how do I want to spend this evening? So I'll just give you a few things that I love to do. I actually like to organize things. I like to, maybe that's just me, but I like to put my clothes in order. I like to go through stuff. I like to get rid of things. I love to declutter. I've got a program on, on that as well. How to simplify and declutter your life. I like to clean out the refrigerator. I like to organize the sock drawer. I actually love to be organized. So for me, I'm still being productive. I'm still engaged in my home, but I'm doing something in the evening that does, is not dependent on answering emails or being at someone's beck and call. I can enjoy myself. I enjoy writing and I enjoy reading. I enjoy taking bubble baths. I enjoy, as I mentioned, spending time with my family and my pets. And for me, when I can be organizing some things, I still feel like I'm being productive, like I'm still um, engaged in the world, and I'm not just laying on the couch watching a movie. Now, you may want to lay on the couch and watch a movie in the evenings. That's your choice. You should do what makes your heart sing. All right, so do you, here are some questions for you. Do you personally have some space and time to unwind at the end of your day? Or do you just plow all the way through like I was doing. Another thing I really like to do is stretch. I like to do exercise, but more relaxing, stretching, breathing exercise. I like to write in my journal. These things are activities that actually help me unwind and feel better and get rid of the heaviness of the day. Um, let's see, what about your home? Do you feel comfortable at home? Can you create in your world, in your life, regardless of where you are, can you create a space that is a haven for you? Maybe it is a favorite pillow that you can sit on. I remember one of my favorite places was in my bedroom and right between the bed and the window, it was only about two feet. It was a very small space and it was my little alcove and I had a nightstand and in my nightstand, I had a pen and I had my journal and I had a couple of inspirational books. And then on the floor, I had a couple of big, thick, cozy pillows. And I would put one big pillow on the floor. I'd put another behind my back and I'd sit with my back against the bed. And that little like two by two foot area was my little sanctuary. And I was tucked away from the rest of the world. I could journal, I could read, I could have a cup of tea and it literally was on the floor next to my bed. So you don't need a lot of space to have your space. Let me know in a comment below if you have your own place where you like to unwind and relax. All right, how about the devices? All right, I think this is so important. At what time do you turn off your devices? Do you keep your cell phone on? Now I've found that, and we'll talk about this when we get into the, the nighttime energy tomorrow. I want to know from you, when do you turn off your phone? Do you turn off your phone? When do you unplug your computer? I hope you actually unplug it so you don't have all that energy going on. Do you watch TV? What time do you turn it off? Are you addicted to any uh, TV shows? Do you fall asleep in front of the TV? This is a little bit going from the evening to the nighttime. And I've had so many clients over the years that I've counseled and coached who had difficulty falling asleep. And I asked them what was going on. And they said, well, I just turn on Netflix and then I fall asleep as I'm watching a movie. And I'm thinking, no wonder you're having your sleep disrupted because that's one of the worst ways to fall asleep. Even if it makes you fall asleep, there are other things that are going on kind of subconsciously and around you and the energy. So let me know in a comment below, do you have a deadline for your devices? When do you turn them off and why? And then let's also talk about food and nourishment in the evening. Do you have an evening meal? What do you eat? What time do you eat? Do you drink with your meal? Do you have, some people are having coffee at eight o'clock at night. I find that very curious. I'd like to know if you have made any connection between your evening energy and the food that you're eating or not eating. So I'm very curious to find out and I will let, I will talk about that more in the private uh, makeover class. The reason why I'm doing the private class is number one, I want to make sure that people who want that information really want it. Here on YouTube, this is a public channel, it's open to anyone. So the things that I talk about are 
they're authentic, but they're only a part of the picture. So when we go into the private classes, I can speak more freely. I can go a little bit more intimately. And I know that those who are really interested in connecting with me have raised their hand, they've signed up, and it's more of an intimate gathering. So that's why some of these things, I just don't want to spill all of my everything in public. But for those of you that are interested, I will share that with you coming up very soon. That will be at the end of this month. All right. So I think that is it in terms of the evening energy. And some people love to listen to music. Some people love to cook a meal that is very relaxing for them. Some people like to dance. Some people go to classes. The list is endless. I want to hear from you. What do you do in your evening hours? And are you able to make that demarcation between the work day or the daylight day and then your evening? Or are you like me and it's the line is a little bit blurred? I'm working on it. And tomorrow we'll talk about the at nighttime energy. And for many, many, many people, this is their most difficult time is falling asleep, making that change between the evening hours and the nighttime hours. And if you can't wait until tomorrow's broadcast, please go back and watch a video I did several weeks ago called How to Have an Awesome Day. And we talk about setting up for that awesome day the night before. All right, friends, always a pleasure to be with you. Thank you to the moderators. Thank you, everybody, for being on board as Healthy Americans. I appreciate you. And I will be with you tomorrow where we are going to talk about nighttime energy and making sure that you are plugging any leaks and you're not poking holes in your ship so that you can have that sustained energy so that you can have a good night's rest and get ready for an awesome day. See you soon, everybody.